in the spiritual writings of the Church Fathers, there is a repeated call to watchfulness. The Church Fathers use an idea of nepsis. It is a Greek word and it comes from the idea of monitoring or, or guarding. The Church Fathers again and again tell us that if we are to make any kind of spiritual progress, if we are to draw closer to God, then we must apply this idea of watchfulness to the mind. We must become monitors, guards of our thoughts and impulses. But it is more than just our thoughts and impulses. The Church Fathers tell us we must guard over the very entry to the heart and mind. Guard what we allow to enter into us. And to do this, the Church Father says we must be attentive to what we allow through all of our senses, both the physical and the spiritual senses. Now this is more than simply being alert to our thoughts. It is about watching the very beginnings, the very birth of those thoughts, the very beginning of coming into being of our impulses. We often refer back to that line in the, the Psalms, which so many people find troubling when they don't understand it, that we must smash the heads of the babies of our enemies on the rocks. It sounds brutal, but the enemies of the demons, their babies are, out, are the thoughts that they, they stir up within us, the impulses. They must be overcome while they are in their infancy. If we allow them to grow within us, then they may defeat us. And this is really about controlling or regulating all of our thoughts and impulses. Controlling and regulating them and controlling what we allow in to stir them up. To become the, the very basis of these thoughts and, and impulses. Elder Ephraim of Mount Athos and Arizona and other places teaches that the man who controls his imagination has the means, the means at least, to remain pure in body and spirit. It's an extraordinary statement. If we control our imagination, we have the very means God has given us to control, to purify our inner state. Someone who attains the purity of soul and body Elder Ephraim says, has great power in his prayer. The grace of God acts in him to purify him and enables him to draw close with boldness even. Boldness of prayer before God. The prayers of such a person become very powerful. And so it is natural for us to say, why then? Why would control over the mind have such a profound effect on us? Why do the Church Fathers teach this? Well, they tell us that we are all capable of being either raised to heaven or plunged to the depths of the hell, even with a single thought. Even with a single thought, we may be raised to heaven or descend to hell. It's an extraordinary thought. Just one thought can utterly transform our inner state. No matter what we have done, no matter what we have strived to do, a single thought can come and can poison us, can poison the soul. This is the warning of the Church Fathers, that a careless person's soul can be poisoned even by a single evil thought. And when we recognize this then, let us shudder at the thought of how passively so many people sit and accept what the television and of course other media pour into them over hours and hours and the impact that this will have in moulding the state of the soul. The images, the words that pour out are constructed and manipulated by godless men. It sounds a harsh statement, but here in the United Kingdom, in Great Britain, we have the BBC, which is so relentless in its objection to tradition, 
its rejection of Christianity, its rejection of national identity. We could go on and on, and these are just the obvious, the obvious coarse surface symptoms of this evil. There are more subtle ways that they manipulate people. They promote LGBT and abortion and very destructive lifestyles, promiscuity, fornication cohabitation and on and on through their dramas, through their soap operas, even their comedies. And if this wasn't bad enough, let us remember that even very young children are allowed to sit and consume, to be entered into by this outpouring from such companies, from such godless people. We can only imagine the the spiritual damage that this is doing, the devastation on the soul. Television deliberately, deliberately stirs up the passions for many reasons, many, very often commercial, but also to retain, to excite, to bring back viewers. It's all about the numbers, it's all about the money. They will dress it up as some kind of cultural event on occasion. But it is about money and it is about numbers. And when they stir up the passions, they will then promise or offer the promise of satisfaction of those desires. They will stir up hatred, anger, judgment, lust, and then offer ways to satisfy these passions that have been stirred. And this is a process that some people give themselves to hours upon hours upon hours every week. It is an enslavement, an enslavement of the very soul. An enslavement given, we give ourselves to this enslavement so freely, to people who despise our faith. When we hear these things, it would be so easy to become despondent, but we are to rejoice. Let us rejoice. The Fathers teach us that when we long for God, when our hearts truly long for God and His purity, when our minds are filled with self-denial and rejection of the world, when we try to turn ourselves in this way back to God. The soul, the Church Fathers say, can be granted such grace that even we sinful creatures who are so damaged and so defiled may be permitted to approach God. It all begins, the Church Fathers say, with our thoughts and with our impulses. Depending on what kind we cultivate within us, we are either defiled or we are purified. And we are making this choice in what we allow ourselves to look at, to consume, what we choose to let our eyes and our ears be filled with. Do we let our eyes wander aimlessly? Do we allow this shouting box that shouts for the devil in our homes to fill us? Or do we let our eyes rest on holy images, on icons? Do we fill our hearts and minds with, with prayer and psalms and, and wholesome things, good music? What are we choosing to fill ourselves with? Do we have any kind of watchfulness over our senses? Do we have watchfulness over our thoughts and impulses in this way? Do we reflect and question what it is we have allowed to be stirred up, what we have chosen to be there within us. Let us read the lives of the saints. Yes, let us look on holy icons. This is how we fill the soul with good things, how we, how we make ourselves capable of receiving God's grace. And of course, ultimately, how we may become the dwelling place even of the Holy Spirit.